Hello and welcome to the second episode of Business News and Analysis. In this series, I not only share with you the top news items, but but I also share with you my fair bit of analysis behind the scene. So let's get started. The first news is from Maruti Suzuki. Maruti Suzuki has reported a decline of 79.2% in its revenues in the June quarter. June quarter means from May, June, July, this three months. So Maruti Suzuki has reported a decline of 79.2% in its revenues and its revenue stands for this June quarter at Rs. 4,106.5 crores. The company has sold 76,599 vehicles in the June quarter in this three months. Uh, May, June, uh, sorry, April, May, June. In this three months, the company has sold 76,599 vehicles. Maruti Suzuki has posted a loss of rupees 249.4 crores, 249.4 crores in this uh, June quarter. In comparison, its profit last year, that is in 2019, in the first quarter of 2019, that is again uh, April, May, June, that profit was rupees 1,435.5 crores. That was its profit one year back in the same period, this this uh, June quarter. But this year, it, it, it turned out to be a loss of 249.4 crores. Why did this happen? This happened, as you know, due to the lockdown because of the pandemic. The, the uh, sale of vehicles, in fact, across the automobile industry, had almost stalled, and that's the reason. And that is the reason why uh, we see the results of Maruti Suzuki as they are. The company, in its official statement, has said that the results cannot be compared to its last quarter because this time there were unusual circumstances. So usually, what happens is, uh, whenever companies bring uh, their quarterly results. Those quarterly results are being compared by the market analysts with the previous quarter of the of the previous year, right? If it's quarter one, uh, Q1, that is quarter one earnings of this year, then this usually then this quarter earnings are going to be compared with Q1 earnings of 2019, right? If it's Q2 earnings of 2020, then the uh, comparison would be Q2 earnings of 2019. But as this year the circumstances were very different, so this uh, results cannot be compared with the previous quarter. That's what Maruti Suzuki in its official statement has stated. Let's move on to the next news now. The next news is from ICICI Lombard. So there are talks that ICICI Lombard may merge with Bharti Exa General. Uh, and the merger, the deal size of the merger would be around rupees 2600 crore, 2600 crore. So I'll share some details with you. Uh, EXA is a French insurance company. It's a French insurance and asset management company. And EXA had entered into a joint venture with Bharti Enterprises in India. Okay. Now, with this merger, if this happens between ICICI Lombard and Bharti EXA, in that case, if this merger happens, then EXA would leave the, the joint venture okay x out move out of the country and then essentially the merged companies would be between icic lombard and uh, and bharti right so in the present form uh, exa has 49 percent stake uh, in in the joint venture between exa and bharti enterprise and bharti enterprise holds a majority stake okay so once this merger happens if it happens then uh, exa would leave the uh, the new setup okay uh, just to give you a context the general insurance companies in this again uh, june quarter the quarter one saw a six percent drop in premium again due to the pandemic okay now let's move on to the next news the next news is from kodak and it's very interesting so kodak we all know is which is known for its cameras kodak in the late 1990s due to its failure to uh, get into the digital photography so uh, uh, digital photography space has been struggling with financial losses for quite some time now once it was a very big brand but right now it's in a declining stage now the company has got a new lease of life 
and why is that US government has agreed to give it a loan of 765 million dollars 765 million dollars why not for its core business but this loan is going to be given to Kodak to develop ingredients for generic drugs yes Kodak is now going to venture into the pharmaceutical space where the loan given by the US government is going to be used to uh, prepare ingredients for the generic drugs why is, is the government the US government giving loan to Kodak them so understand this the US government or rather US USA uh, is dependent for its generic drugs for the ingredients of the generic drugs mostly on foreign com uh, foreign countries the two major countries from which from which US government imports a lot of ingredients to prepare its generic drugs are India and China in fact uh, China is the biggest um, in a uh, uh, manufacturer of the ingredients of generics and China uh, and India is second okay now US wants to lessen the dependency to procure ingredients for making generic drugs on the foreign nations and it wants to develop its own manufacturing uh, setup it wants to prepare it wants to manufacture the equipments the ingredients of generic drugs within its own country so this loan is aimed to uh, to give Kodak that space to create the the setup the manufacturing facilities for the ingredients of the generic drugs that is the reason why US government is giving Kodak this loan okay now let's move on to the next news the next news is from the Indian steel sector so according to a report by Moody, Moody's investor service so Moody is a rating agency so according to a report, report by Moody's investor service Indian steel consumption is going to decline by at least 10 percent till for the next 12 months till March 2021 so according to the report by Moody's investor service India's steel consumption is going to decline by 10 percent and why is that see the majority of the steel in India are being procured by uh, the construction companies the infrastructure companies are automobile company and the shipbuilding uh, companies right so these are the uh, these are the four sectors which procure a lot of steel the automobile the construction the infrastructure and shipbuilding now because of this pandemic and the lockdown the demand in from this four sectors have been very low right as a result the steel consumption is going to go down at least by 10 percent as per Moody's investor service okay uh, just to give you a context once more India at present is the world's second largest steel producer after China India overtook Japan in 2018 now India is the second largest steel producer in the world okay now let's move on to the next news the next news is from Bharat Forge uh, Bharat Forge is an auto component uh, maker uh, maker company it, it, it makes auto components okay so Bharat Forge is going to raise rupees 500 crore through NCDs and what is NCDs NCDs are non convertible debentures what are non -con convertible debentures let's understand that first first see whenever a company reads capital it can raise capital either of the two ways either it can raise capital through equity that is it can issue uh, equity shares or it can get uh, uh, capital through loans that is debt right so for that the company can issue bonds okay again bonds can be of two types one secured bonds and the other is non secured bonds right or unsecured bonds unsecured bonds are usually called debentures okay so understand unsecured bonds are usually called debentures now what do you mean by non convertible debentures okay there is a form of debentures which can be converted to stocks if the bondholders want but non convertible debentures means the debentures cannot be converted into equity or shares right clear now Bharat Forge is going to raise 500 crore through non convertible debentures that is unsecured bonds which cannot be converted to shares that's non convertible debentures okay the face value of the debentures should be 
10 lakhs each would be rupees 10 lakhs each that the face value of the debenture uh, the company though has not disclosed the reason for raising this capital okay so let's move on to the next news now the next news is from Qatar sovereign fund the news is in fact the news is from Jio rather so Qatar sovereign fund may invest 1.5 billion dollars in Jio fiber okay so Qatar sovereign fund it's named as Qatar investment authority QIA Qatar investment authority there's a name of Qatar's uh, sovereign fund uh, and sovereign fund means the Qatar government has uh, it's a state-owned fund the Qatar government has uh, a majority stake in it rather it's Qatar government's holding company so Qatar investment authority is in talks with Reliance to invest in its geofiber now as you might be aware the Reliance Industries Limited has already uh, raised over 20 billion dollar via stake sales for its geo platform so companies like Facebook Google uh, 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 Saudi, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia's investment funds uh, KKR and there are, there are many market investors who have already invested in geo platforms right and uh, RIL has already raised around 20 billion dollars through uh, uh, stake sales that is uh, equity sales right now RIL wants to monetize its geo digital fiber so what's digital fiber so fi digital fiber are basically a type of broadband which give which has very big, uh, huge bandwidth and through which the internet spe uh, speed is being greatly enhanced right that's fiber okay now geo wants to monetize its fiber assets through this deal uh, through uh, raising capital from Qatar sovereign fund okay uh, in fact as per the reports uh, reliance has already roped in city group global, global markets Moelis and company and icici securities limited as its investment bankers for the deal okay let's move on to the next news uh, this is the last news uh, for today so this news is from the telecom space Indian government is considering to lower the base price of 5G spectrum what does it mean see India has earmarked around 30 from 3300 to 3600 megahertz of 5G megahertz band for 5G now try the regulatory authority in the telecom sector try has suggested 5G price at rupees 492 crore per megahertz I told you India has earmarked 3300 to 3600 megahertz band for 5G now each megahertz is going to be priced at 492 crores that was a proposed price given by TRI okay now what happens is usually to uh, for deployment right when telecom companies get the spectrum and for deployment uh, they get so uh, equipments from Chinese companies like Y and Z, uh, ZTA, ZTE so these are companies Chinese companies usually give very low cost equipments to the telecom companies and as a result their operational costs really go down but since India Indian government doesn't want Chinese investment more of Chinese investment in the country so then the telecom companies of the of India would be dependent on the European companies for example Ericsson Nokia and South Korea Samsung right now if Indian telecom companies procure um, equipments uh, for deployment from uh, South Korean companies and European companies then the deployment cost would go up by 15 to 20 percent now that would increase the burden on the end user on the customers and the uh, on the institutional uh, customers and also retail customers right so to lessen the burden on the end customer Indian government is thinking to lower the base price that is from 492 crore per megahertz the government is thinking to lower that base price so that the deployment cost also goes down okay so that is the reason why the Indian government is considering lowering the base price from 5G spectrum in fact the uh, private telecom companies the major private telecom companies of India like Bharti Airtel, Vodafone, Idea and Reliance have uh, termed the, the trice price of 492 crore, crore per megahertz as too high so now the government is considering to decrease that price from 492 crores let's see in the future how much this price is being decreased okay so with this I come to the end of today's business news I hope you liked it I hope you liked it okay if you did like the video please do like uh, press on the like button 
share the video and subscribe to the channel i'll see you again until then take care bye bye thank you so much for watching